24 to 48 hours. So that's going to be coming your way. So again, welcome. It's great to have you here. And if you're listening to the recording after the fact, it's awesome for listening to the recording. And um, today is all about Facebook. Today we've got some really, really, really cool stuff we're going to cover. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a quick overview of some of the um, kind of main points that are going to be gone over today on the call. And then I'm going to just refresh how to ask questions and make sure that, you know, we have a way for you to get all your questions answered and all that good stuff. So on today's call, as I said, it's all about Facebook awesomeness. And we've got Kurt Malley and we've got Hani. And Kurt's going to start us off. He's going to talk about some of the most effective strategies that he's using in his agency uh, when it comes to Facebook marketing. He's going to talk about some really big Facebook changes and upcoming updates that are coming down the pipe. And he's going to talk about the Facebook slap and how you can avoid it. You know, we all want to avoid a good slap. He's also going to talk about how to optimize your Facebook campaigns for more profit. And then we're going to move over to Hani, and Hani is going to cover some really cool stuff for us. He's going to cover Facebook ad tips, so specifically certain colors that you should use and certain colors that you should absolutely avoid. He's going to talk about bidding strategy, ad frequency, cost per like, page link strategy, and like campaign placement. So these are all some really, really juicy Facebook strategies that we want to give to you today. So let me just chat really, really briefly about how to ask questions and how to get your questions answered. If at all possible, it would be fantastic if you could save any questions that you have all the way to uh, save them for the end of uh, today's training. And what you'll find if you do that is that probably a lot of the questions that you have will be answered by Kurt and will be answered by Hani as they go through their individual uh, portions of the training. So if you can, please save your questions to the Q&A. Uh, period that we have reserved at the end of the call today. And if you absolutely have a burning question that you need covered, you can go ahead and enter it into the chat box that you'll see, uh, the little GoToWebinar chat box, and, and we can interrupt the training and get that answered. But as I said, if you save it to the end, you're probably going to find that question's already answered. Um, and then at the end, uh, when we open up for Q&A to ask a question, just go ahead and, and type that question right into the chat box and that, that'll come up for us and, and either Hani or Kurt, depending on what your question's about, we'll be able to answer that for you. And then of course, if you come up with questions after the fact or if you're listening, watching this call, um, the, the replay, later on down the line you have questions, you can just go ahead and post those in the Flight Club uh, Facebook group and we can answer those questions for you there too. So with that, thanks again for joining us on the call and I'm going to hand things right over. Unmuted. Awesome, Kurt. Awesome, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you great. Awesome, 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 awesome. Let me pull this up here real quick and show my main screen. There you go, can you see my screen? Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'll jump right on into this again. My name's Kurt Mall. I appreciate you guys um, for letting me be here. I'm a Flight Club member as well, too. Um, got to meet a lot of you guys out actually out at the event in San Diego, so it's an honor to be here. Appreciate it. Uh, here I also have our Black Box Social Media COO, Mr. Zach Collins. Hey, guys. Um, Zach really runs everything here in the agency. It makes me look pretty. Um, so I get to travel and hang out with all you guys, come up with amazing ideas, and he's the one who's really implementing and really staring over a ton of numbers. So basically what Hani does for Glenn is what Zach does for me and pretty much makes me look good. Just like I know Hani does too. So, all right, we're going to jump right on into this. Um, I'm really kind of curious, uh, just for the people on the call, uh, two things is I'll be able to take questions at the end, uh, but I do want to tailor it depending on people's skill level when they're here. Um, I was really impressed with the Flight Club members last time on how much you were spending. And I want to make sure if I should jump over or skip over stuff, would you mind just typing in the uh, in the chat or in the questions? Just tell me if you spent over or under a thousand dollars total on Facebook. I'd say under a thousand dollars, you're kind of getting started. A thousand to five thousand, moderate. Over five thousand, um, expert. So I'm just trying to see if I should, you know, move slowly at some parts, dive right on into it. If you wouldn't mind, just type it in the questions section, and I'll kind of tailor the presentation a little bit. So. Really what I'm going to show, uh, and go ahead and type that in there. You know, like I say, if you spent less than $1,000 total, um, if you spent 1000 to 10000 or, or sorry, 1000 to 5000 or 5000 plus, um, let me know. Okay, so I'm going to jump into this. Basically, what we're going to, show to share today is literally straight from the horse's mouth and, of course, of what we test. 
Uh, this is a picture of us meeting with Facebook. Two of these guys, we blur out their faces. I usually do this for my regular webinar. These are guys from global, uh, global Facebook compliance. They're basically kind of like leprechauns, which is, hey, here's what we're going to tell you what to do. Here's how you should do it. But it's not written anywhere. We're not going to call you back. We're going to say that we're gonna, we want to talk to you and get some ideas for you. But literally, this was a great conversation in 90 minutes. Super important for your business. But fortunately, you just don't really find it lots of places. You know, I covered this just a little bit. And I'm not going to drop it in numbers too much. But the main thing that we're doing right here, like they always say, of course, in marketing, give the open loop, which you're all familiar with. But I mean, these leads are really coming right here from a survey. Uh, this is then health and wellness, 13,000 leads and a dollar. Uh, really, if you have good content, which I know a ton of you people do, um, really anybody listening that's in Flight Club, uh, remember it's all duplicatable for pretty much any kind of niche as well too. Here are coaching leads. We got 1,700 leads for under a dollar in just seven days. Um, here's 9,000 leads. This is really in the entertainment niche. I mean, self-development. Really, this niche could be considered a... That's in one day, those 9,000 leads. Oh, yeah. That's in one day from the arrow right here. And then Zach made me show on the... The second arrow you can see towards the bottom, there are 36,000 leads. Now, just in all fairness, um, we found a really good uh, campaign with a really good image. We got a really good niche. But one of the things we're going to talk about here in a little bit, Zach, if I remember right, the targeting that you ended up setting in here like after 30 days, isn't it pretty much just open? Yeah, it's, it's general targeting for this client. So, you know, I've been hearing on some of the other masterminds as well, too is a lot of people going for really wide targeting and even seeing some better click-through rates and some better cost per opt-in. Um, we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes as well too. Now my favorite strategy is something I talked about before with the conversion pixel where essentially we're really focused on the average cost per click and obviously the cost per opt-in. Um, we see with OCPM sometimes cost per click can go up a little bit, cost per opt-in can go up a little bit, but usually the average revenue per opt-in goes up as well too. Again, all numbers to watch, but the main thing is, is we literally just hit two different buttons to change things from holy crap, we're in red, uh, to really start making money. And again, this is something that works across all niches as well too. So uh, with that strategy, it's really when I was working with Zach, he's like, hey, Kurt, I tried something, check this out. If we really focus on our conversion pixel and we create an audience from that conversion pixel, which I'll show you on how to do, essentially we cut our cost in half I'm trying to think, uh, and I can I know I can be real honest here and open with the flight club. Is there any client that we've had that the that the overlay pixel like didn't make a, a marked improvement? Like, is there anyone that just didn't work at all? Maybe just for the client where we're getting those leads because they can go so wide. But it's it's the best thing we have going to this day. I mean, is there anybody that you've seen where we've used like the overlay and their cost actually went up? No, not go up. It, it, what it does is it allows us to target a lot wider. So we've found a lot more markets because of it. Mm -hmm. Actually, which with, with saying that, by the way, as well, too, is it gives us a lot more time to scale. Um, basically, this, this whole slide in here is, hey, we speak a lot. We're in lots of different niches. Uh, my business partner made them one of the top Facebook experts. Kind of funny when you can just call yourself whatever you want to when you're doing a webinar. I love that stuff. Um, many of you guys probably saw me speak at Flight Club. Um, Basically, what we're talking about here is information from the agency that we just test with uh, clients from lots of different niches. And then, of course, what Facebook says, you know, the truth lies somewhere kind of in the middle. And that's really what the uh, presentation's about. Now, if I started from the very, very beginning, this is what Facebook teaches. Basically, Facebook's, and this is literally the slides we grabbed from Facebook. Facebook says overall, create a page, create engaging content, advertise, target, and measure. I mean, well, it sounds simple enough, so let's make it really simple and work our way up, right? Create a page. Anybody can do that. Create a cover picture. It's pretty easy. Make sure your logo shows up. You know, don't have your company name in the logo. We like to brand this little genius guy. Just make something that's recognizable. I know a lot of people like to do faces as well too. Absolutely fine, but just make it something recognizable and brandable. You know, the other thing is, is what we've seen and heard from Facebook. You know, you got the About Us page. When you're filling out your fan page, fill out everything. What we've been told is people who don't fill out their entire information, like literally all the spots, it's kind of like filling out a local search directory for your business or an online directory for your business so you get found. The thing is, is it's gonna help on graph search a little bit, but let's be honest, not a lot of people are probably searching for your fan page unless you got it locked up with a keyword. Supposedly, this has something to also do with um, uh, the quality number that you're given or the quality score that you're giving for running ads. There is no official 
out in public. There is an official language if you're talking to a Facebook rep. They do have quality scores, but they don't let you know how the scores work, up, down, whatever. So it's really important. Fill these things out. You know, Facebook's been shutting down a lot of accounts recently, especially in the last two weeks. We really want to take care of preventative maintenance. So if you're just running a fan page that has the about us filled in and that's it and you're running stuff, I would highly encourage you to get some engaging content, but especially fill out all, and I'll get into that in a second, but definitely fill out this about page. Uh, not really just for people from find you, but Facebook's really going to identify you as a real business. And again, I cannot repeat this enough. Facebook right now is shutting down ads and accounts um, that even fall inside the terms of use and they'll send you a blank statement that says, hey, listen, uh, Facebook reserves a right at any time. I can almost repeat this word for word. Facebook reserves a right at any time to uh, um, uh, to allow ads, to allow ads and ads accounts to be displayed on the Facebook platform. We may or may, something like we may or may not um, allow, uh, yeah, we may or may not revoke or allow con uh, access to our ad platform at any time with or without any reason for out thou, for you, for whatever the hell. Thank you, this is our final decision. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm pretty sure they always say thank you very much for your time. Or like, have a great day. Yeah, we shut everything down for a great day, right? So just be careful. So Facebook wants to share stories and content. Stories is the real big thing. I'm actually going to give you a report on that in a couple of minutes that readers and fans will engage with. I mean, even just posting once a day can be a big help. Now, Facebook will go, if you really go through the information, Facebook will say, hey, we suggest you to do 90 characters or less with a call to action, question, or incentive. Now, Facebook just spent a bunch of money touring the U.S. in this thing called Facebook Fit. So for our advantage, what we did is we got like 11 staff members to dress up in t-shirts, carry binders with open trouble tickets or support tickets to say, hey, we have questions. And at this event, there was about 400 people, small business owners. Facebook literally gave this advice right here and some others. They're like, hey, look, we want you to have a call to action, give a question or incentive, you know, a reason to click. So like in direct, market, uh, direct response marketing, obviously, it's always selling the click. But then a Facebook rep at the event, that second bullet point tells us, Hey, don't do a call to action in your statement. Like we have a standard operating procedures. It's a binder and we're, we're updating it and I'm happy to share it with the flight club members. Um, but uh, basically what happens is, is we handed the binder and said, hey, this is how we should write copy. And the Facebook rep, I mean, Zach was there. She kind of freaked out. She's like, this is actually what we absolutely do not want on Facebook. And we're like, but that's, that's direct response marketing. So what happens is, is this article comes out and it confirms it on the 27th. It says social media giant, we're going to read the first bullet point, wants to reduce all those clickbait headlines in your newsfeed. So it, apparently the stuff that's worked for years, that psychologically is proven to work for years in direct response marketing is now kind of completely different. Yeah. However, it's not really that different. Zach, what was that book that you got that uh, Calvin Parker suggested? Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. Yeah, if you get the opportunity, pick that thing up because he uh, uh, there was an individual that really gave some really good insight to us when we were talking about this algorithm change, Facebook not liking direct response marketing, which is really, if you narrow down your avatar and really focus on your avatar and make your ads really clear, and I'm going to give away that PDF that we have as well too that we found, um, it can make a huge difference for the way that Facebook serve your ads. So one of the things that, the, that Facebook's looking for, really important, is bounce rate. So Facebook's really paying attention to time on site on your landing page. If you have a high bounce rate, it's actually going to give you a lower unwritten quality score. Um, really important. So we want to get congruent stories. And again, we're going to give you a report that runs through that. Do you want to add anything to the clickbait? Yeah, really, Facebook wants people to know what they're clicking beforehand. So those really curiosity-driven headlines that the Upworthy and news... And news um, whatever they're called, those guys, the Upworthy ones have gotten through BuzzFeed. They, um, they don't want those anymore. And it's something that a lot of the affiliates have used for some of their direct marketing for the CPA offers. And Facebook's really rebelling against that, both on the um, kind of the black hat side. And so they're looping in a lot of the white hat with it as well. So it's just something to be really aware of that the ads and the headlines should be highly congruent with the landing pages so that people know where they're going to. Uh, so here's just some Facebook types. Uh, you have news feed, obviously, mobile, right-hand side. It's pretty important that you're always split testing out, at least your different uh, placements. We're going to show you a couple of examples here when we talk about our retargeting just a little bit. 
um, especially for how big mobile's grown, you know, instead of using call to action um, in your actual ad, what Facebook's really prefer you to do is use the call to action button. You can find the ad manager, or power, uh, power editor, shop now, book now, learn more, sign up, download. Um, here's really where we get into targeting on Facebook is core audience, custom audience, lookalike audience. So some of this is what Facebook trains is a little confusing, but to walk through it, Here's your different targeting types you have on Facebook. You have interests, locations, demographics. I think everyone knows that pretty easy. If you've ever run a Facebook ad, you know that. Now, the examples is Facebook's getting a lot better into search, uh, separating people into general categories as well, too. For instance, like healthy living, living in Austin. And Zach put something up from uh, the Facebook rep. She said over and over and over, what did she say to you? Moms have a higher... Moms are the most expensive target on Facebook because they have the highest buying power of anyone out there. And she didn't, but but Zach was really good at this and picked it up. Like she didn't say that once or twice. The rep mentioned it to you like five or six times when we were talking. Yeah, right? it's by a multiple to buy that traffic. It's more expensive. Uh, and I I don't remember. Have we tested that much? Just straight up moms because it's expensive. To be honest, it's not our primary demographic. We see it with um, one of our blogging clients that targets females. And we do find the cost per click is, really gets into the up to $2 because that's who we are targeting for most of our ads. So the thing is, though, is when we go into partner categories, we're talking about off-site behaviors. Um, Facebook is actually now allowing you to target to people who have spent at least $100 in Facebook credits in the last 90 days or spent money on the platform or... People who actually spent money with the third-party conversion pixel. So you can really tell who spent money on Facebook. And you can target, for instance, healthy living, living in Austin, moms who have a high probability of, of uh, spending money on Facebook and purchasing green smoothies. <coughs> so what happens is you get super laser targeted. And essentially the way that this flies in here is we have interest, location, demographics, behaviors, so the difference is, is, especially with a lot of you who already have a list, we can easily take a list, take a look at our list, look at the demographics, find out exactly who our avatar is to market to, and Facebook literally tells you exactly who to market to. Now, one of the things with custom audiences, you can upload custom audiences. I show you a link in where you do this. We're going to explain it more in a couple of, uh, uh, a couple of slides. But uh, essentially, a, a custom audience is you upload email addresses, and then you're going to give um, inclusion or exclusion targeting, meaning that you upload your email, uh, uh, you upload your email list, and you're, I'm going to show you how to use retargeting. For instance, like once someone opts in, once someone opts in, you have a pixel that's on the thank you page. Plus, on top of that, you can upload your email addresses as well. So when you roll out something brand new, you may want to advertise to your buyers list first, right? This would be with a retargeting pixel and with your buyers' emails. Or what you may want to do is like, uh, which I'm sure all of you've done is like for Labor Day or the holidays, you run kind of some kind of special, but you don't want your current buyers to see that you're running that special. You can exclude them from your targeting as well. It's literally just a pixel in selecting uh, selecting an audience. A lot of people who use custom audience will be to run ads to tell customers about a new product. So people who opted in, if we split out our funnel, people who just opted in, people who just bought our front entry product, people who bought our 997 product, for example. So we can get really specific on how we want to roll out new products and services with already a pre-qualified audience essentially built in. We can leave out customer list. We can create something called a lookalike audience. Essentially what that is is this. Uh, Facebook will find people who are similar to the people you know with what they call lookalike audiences. And this is all from a custom audience pixel. Either you upload an email address list of a couple hundred people or you have at least a thousand people pass through a pixel and it'll allow you to, uh, I don't even think it's a thousand anymore now that I say that. I think they've lowered it, haven't they, to create a lookalike? I know a fan page has to be over a thousand, but I think it's just a couple hundred now. I'm not sure for the lookalike. It's a hundred for the pixel and last I knew it was a thousand, but I haven't done it in a couple weeks. Um, so basically what happens is it takes your customer John or your customer Alexis, right? Someone who's already bought, for example. Facebook will actually go out and find 
people who have very similar characteristics to that person who bought. And when Facebook's using the um, basically these demographics, it's going to match their personal pro profile, their online habits, their offline habits. Facebook's getting really good about creating a similar audience. We're going to talk about testing that. Now, here's my favorite strategy. I talked about this on stage at a flight club. Basically, it comes down to create a tracking pixel. I'm going to show you a you know cheesy little graph on how to do that. Implement your pixel on your website. Create ads with conversion tracking and re uh, view reports to determine ROI and ad spend. This is actually directly taken from Facebook, and here's what I love about it. This slide and the next slide. This is really easy, you guys. Think about the general public. Like, Create your own tracking pixel. Implement the pixel on your site. Create ads with a conversion tracking pixel. View reports to determine ROI on ad spend. With that conversion tracking, Facebook allows you to optimize, uh, optimize your ads, drive value. Conversion tracking, track the ROI of your ad spend, optimize CPM, deliver ads to users who are most likely to convert. I'm like, how in the hell could anybody possibly understand this if they're reading the Facebook how-to guide? Like, I had to stare at this and drool for like an hour before I really understood it. And then it's actually not that difficult. So let's talk about what really came out of this meeting, what we learned from Facebook, what we've applied overall that you can use as well. What we do is we use seven steps for effective Facebook advertising with all of our clients. Now, we drive likes to a fan page not to build a bunch of likes, but we want to bring, let's call them uh, lukewarm opt-ins, right? They're, they're, they're warm people getting into our funnel. And what we do is we really focus on, okay, how do we add more people to our tribe on Facebook? And then what we do is even if we do an engagement post once a day, we find out what is the most uh, engaged post that we had over the last week. And we'll promote one post a week. And I'm going to give you some ideas of promoting posts. Basically, this is overall just branding. So let's just say you're in the um, um, relationship niche, right? You can say, uh, I'm in love with my husband. I'm in love with my wife. I love being in love with my spouse. You know, things like that. And people will like your page. Engagement could just be tips that you're giving about couples, uh, um, you know, some great ideas for communication. Um, by the way, I saw on um, uh, Shark Tank last night, there was two people. That they're like, oh, we have great communication. We've been married for 18 months. We have this teddy bear that no one, that the teddy bear will sit out on the table. And then if one couple sees the teddy bear, then that means that we'll, that we'll have a conversation and we'll talk. And the only person who can talk holds a teddy bear. And people will value this if we sell it for $297. You need to switch presenters Oops. if needed. Yeah. Do you guys How need you me? Do do I think I got a little feedback. I'm be talking for maybe 30 minutes more hang on one second i'm going to if you guys don't mind yeah. i gotta mute to let me see i can't actually i can't mute anybody out that's all right all right that's perfect thank you i was getting a little feedback okay um what was interesting is because they're like hey this is highly valuable to us so it must be highly valuable to other people which doesn't make any sense as an entrepreneur the market will always evaluate of course what is valuable so here's what happens is we show you to place regular engagement from there, we take your most engaging post and we're going to run a promoted post. So we're going to run this in front of uh, your fans, your opt-ins, uh, the people who've seen your landing pages. The reason is because we're keeping your content in front of people. So for instance, we'll do a weekly video. I'll show you an example in a minute. We do a weekly video. I record them on Friday. I put them out on the blog on Tuesday. On Tuesday, we send out a mass email to everybody. Hey, here's a new blog post. We then post it on our Facebook fan page, and then we use it as a promoted post. So we promote it to our fans, we promote it to our friends of fans, and then we're going to set it up on retargeting, which I'll show you in a minute. So it's always building our brand. People are always seeing my face for our content. Now, promoted dark post is just promoting post and putting post inside of news feeds that do not appear on your fan page. Advertorial, we're going to get that in a minute. And then really, once we start getting into the funnel targeting and setting up the retargeting, I mean, really, all you guys in Flight Club, I mean, from the people that I know or that I've met, have amazing content. Step one through five should be really easy for you. And literally, it's just a couple of setup of things and testing for step six and seven to really start driving stuff home for you as well, too. So overall, identify our avatar. You know, look at the Facebook pages and websites of the sites your avatar frequents to gather an idea of the type of content that they enjoy. I think most people here are already to the point where they already have some good, some really good content unless they're starting a new business. But I think you probably narrowed down who your avatar is. And if you're not quite sure, really take a look at your, um, you know, your buyers list. And there are companies, of course, out there 
Uh, I know that someone in Flight Club just recommended me to someone. I don't know if I can give out the name, so I won't. But you guys can ask me privately of someone who analyzed their um, uh, all their buyer database to really get some good insight. You know, the other thing that we do if you're building a brand, we drive targeted likes, and it's to pre-qualify uh, potential customers with effective like campaigns. So it's basically laser target emotional ads. I love my husband. I love being in love. You know, if you're in the relationship space or um, uh, daily motivation excites me to like us. What we're doing is we're looking for people that would be qualified to be your audience. It's really a lukewarm opt-in, right? Now, if you already have a list, you can pretty much skip the likes. I'm always run Now, I'm spending a couple thousand dollars a day in Facebook, and what's happening is, is I'm getting residual likes from it, but I'm always adding to that database. So when it comes time to launch a new product, launch a new idea, launch a new blog post, have a new webinar, I can literally target all those people who've come over to our fan page to either get them to opt in if they're already on our fan page or friends of friends to see our content. All you gotta do is upload your email list as a custom audience and Facebook will analyze your list for you. If you're starting a brand new business, we always tell people, hey, it's a good idea to run a like campaign to start qualifying your audience, but you can tell a ton of stuff and especially who and where to target people on Facebook just by uploading your email list as a custom audience into Facebook. And then from there, click on Audience Insights on the left-hand side when you're inside Ad Manager. And if your list is, a, is three, 4,000 people, it's gonna give you really good insight. You got 50,000 people, it's gonna give you really, really good insight. I think a lot of people who are gonna listen to this recording or on the call will have a list that they can analyze. It's the first thing that I would start setting up and take a look at. Step two for us is really engagement. Uh, create friendly and engaging content to increase audience reach uh, for uh, for each post to your fan page. The bigger the reach, the more exposure you're gonna get for your brand. I mean, I think you all know that it's really just content, right? So what we're looking for is we always think about this. How do we wanna communicate to our avatar and what's the thumb stopper? You know, the content should be so compelling that it should get people to stop scrolling through their news feed. Um, this is what Facebook would call a thumb stopper, right? What, uh, and I'm going to give you, again, in just a minute, an exact report on how to make this happen. I mean, this is fresh off the presses. Like, I just found this. Everybody here in the agency is using it. Um, here's the other thing is we, uh, we encourage people to do. Once a week, bare minimum, once a week, take one of your posts and boost it. That button right where you see there on the right-hand side at the very bottom of this post, right? Just hit boost post. Do it for a minimum of three days for five bucks a day. It's only 15 bucks, but it's keeping your content in front of your likes, in front of your friends of friends, and it's just keeping your brand open and fresh. It's like Coca-Cola doesn't necessarily need to advertise. You already know who they are, but super important. It's really good to just keep up your branding, and really 15 bucks a week really isn't much just for your branding, right? What are we talking about, 45 what is that, 45, 40, 90 bucks a, a month? That's pretty easy to afford. Boost your post. Run a small boost post campaign for each blog post that you create. So any new content that you create, you should boost that post as well too. So again, people, you're keeping in front of your market, right? Promoted post. What we do is we find our most popular posts, like our most popular blog post. And if I'm targeting the keyword social media marketers, I will run 10 or $15 a day of one of my blog posts to the keyword that's working the best for me at that time. This way I'm getting people to visit my blog, almost kind of like if we got a blog post to rank organically, I'm just getting people to move over to my blog post. So now they're seeing my ads because I'm targeting this specific keyword. They're seeing some of my content as well too. Now remember, anybody who lands on my blog, I'm gonna retarget them as well. So I want them to consume my content either by liking my page, which then I can retarget it with, uh, um, by targeting my fan page or with my promoted post, or I want them to click on my promoted post to go to my blog where I can retarget them, or I want them to click on my promoted post to watch a video to get to know me a little bit better, right, to build that rapport, or of course send them over to what we like to call a decision page. Now, uh, promoting a dark post, really all that means is you're advertising in people's news feed who don't necessarily like your page. It's just so you can split test out ads. I'm pretty sure everybody here knows what a dark post is. If you don't, I'm absolutely happy to answer those questions for you as well. 
Now, here's the biggest thing that we're finding with Facebook overall. Uh, a lot of you guys have been in the game for a while know that history has a tendency to repeat itself. There are some great days that you absolutely just have to cash in on, like the very early beginning of uh, Google, right? And then there are some days where it's like, oh my goodness, literally they just turned the switch off. What the hell just happened? So what we're seeing is a lot of trends that happened in Google are now coming over to Facebook. So one of the things we tell people to create is an advertorial. And I think all of you know exactly what an advertorial is for native advertising, which is basically it looks like a news story that belongs on that page. So if you go to AOL or CNN, it looks like a news story. It's very congruent. Here's a great example. If I search social media marketing, look, the ads at the top, the ads at the right really are pretty much like this organic link right here, right? There's not a lot of difference, a little bit. Google wants people congruent. They want their ads congruent with their content. Do the same thing on Facebook. Facebook is rewarding you for making sure that your ads are congruent. Now remember, if you've done any kind of SEO stuff in the past or hired people for it, a bounce rate's a really big deal. You know, someone who does a search for social media marketing, I click on that fourth arrow down at the bottom, it leads me to a crappy page that I'm not gonna use and I click back. Uh, Google looks at that as uh, you're having a high bounce rate. It is not satisfying the user. So <clears throat> Facebook's looking at this exact same thing. So we want to be really cautious to make sure our ads are congruent. Now, now that you laser targeted your avatar plus content, what's your next step? Really, from meeting a lot of people out at Flight Club, you already have the sales, raving fans, high ticket sales. You got a lot of those funnels in place. Really, at the end of the day, what we've gotten really good at is attracting that attention, getting the attraction over part of your funnel, and marketing your funnel. Now, we'll say over and over and over, we are happy to give funnel advice through all the different clients that we see, all the different niches. We see some things that are very common mistakes or very common opportunities. Uh, we're getting a lot of people to the front door, um, but A, it's always about how we get them in the front door. What are they buying? What are they opting into? But B, what's your follow-up process? Where we see clients really killing it right now is really focusing on their follow-up. Realizing, hey look, I might not break even day one, I may break even day 15, I may break even day 30 with running my ads, or heck, 45 days from now, I could be getting a six to one return depending on my follow-up. Our most successful clients, it's not that they have a year follow-up, but I would say they have at least a 30-day follow-up. And they're proactive about, What's the next thing that's coming on my calendar? Um, which is interesting. Do you mind for just 30 seconds talking about that affiliate email that we got that talked about the difference of just marketing their list? I know I kind of cut you on the spot of this. I just thought about it versus getting uh, getting more opt-ins and focusing on more opt-ins. If the guy wanted to make a million dollars a year versus $3 million a year. Oh, that one. Um, yeah, that was a great email. I don't. It's, it's been a couple of weeks since I looked at it, but the idea there was that by taking the cost up front and putting those against your business that you may have lower revenue for that year, but what you're doing is you're reinvesting those costs. So rather than making $200,000 net profit, you might take 100,000 of that and reinvest that in more leads. The leads are coming in at, let's say $4, so you get 25,000 more leads and those leads can be worth $10 per year in perpetuity. So the payout there could, end up being $250,000 per year because of 25,000 leads. But at the same time, your tax bill just went from 100,000 more, the, you're taking $100,000 less. So in that example, owing the IRS went from about $80,000 to $15,000 while growing the business. So it's a pretty um, important concept and Kirk can share the email there because in terms of building your business, it's, it's kind of a no brainer to invest in growth and lead generation rather than giving some of your profits back to the government. Love the government for that one. So at the end of the day, it really comes down to funnel targeting. A lot of you already have a really good list. So you know age, gender, you pretty much know the location, the interest targeting. We can pick up some offsite habits when we're really studying the traffic as well. So here's a quick tip I just love to share with people when I'm in masterminds. Um, if, uh, uh, if you see an ad over and over, typically it means that they're crushing it, right? So click on the ad that appears in your news feed. You only do this in the news feed only. At the top right hand side, you're going to see a little down arrow. Click that down arrow. Click on why am I seeing this? It'll tell you what keyword someone's targeting you for. 
So I would go out and like your competitors' pages, look at their advertisements, start taking a look at what keyword they're advertising, right? And uh, start hitting some of those uh, some of those keywords as well too. Uh, retargeting, you know, retargeting's become huge on Facebook. We are just seeing really just a great uptake from it. You know, we're a little hesitant at first. Saw a couple of leads come in. Uh, I'm I'm seeing probably sixty percent of our sales, uh, fifty five to sixty percent of our sales are now coming through retargeting. So super important to make sure that you have it in place as well too. Uh, Facebook, by the way, Facebook mentioned something to us when we were at the Facebook event that basically said that it was something like over ninety eight percent of people who see or click on an ad same day typically don't buy. Basically what happens is, is it takes them multiple impressions, like I know that we've all heard before, but they have a very strong probability with buying within 28 days. Facebook actually tracks that over 28 days. That's an example of attribution that we're gonna go over in a second. Overall, here's my favorite piece. Here's the way Facebook explains it. I'm gonna show you how to set it up, okay? Facebook will profile your perfect audience for you if you set this up right. And setting this up basically is on your website, we want to track people that come on in and we're going to track them with a tracking cookie, right? Like a pixel. Maybe you remember from Flight Club seeing this ugly slide before, right? We printed it up, obviously. Well, along the way, any place that my, it's kind of weird, I was going to say any place my John goes, but when I say any place my John goes, that sounds a little weird. Anyway, uh, anywhere that my customer John goes, right? That even sounds weirder. I'm just going to quit digging myself a hole. Go to opt-in. We're going to cookie John the entire way. We want to follow John to see exactly what he's doing. Because essentially what's gonna happen is, depending on how much traffic you're running, we can say, you know what, let's filter this down. There was at least some people who clicked on my ads and got to my website. Okay, everybody who landed on my website, let's create a similar visitor so I can target traffic to my blog, right? Every time I have a blog update, I could target these people. It's a good way to get branding out, it has a high probability to like my stuff as well too. Or Facebook go out and find me similar often. So now we can really focus, like, like Zach was talking about the example of building the list, of really building up that list. Or the offer. Hey, Facebook, go out and find me more buyers. And everybody may, and, and lots of people will say, well, heck, I'm just going to go out and find buyers the whole time. Well, you can, but it's all part of your strategy depending on what you want to do, right? If you're collecting emails, if you're really building on your branding, really it's putting it all together and, make the fa and, and have Facebook do all the heavy lifting for you. So just to be clear, the conversion pixel, you can track and optimize your campaigns for clicks, you can optimize your campaigns for leads, for sales, you can now do video views, for offers, for event attendees, there's lots of things that you can set up and optimize for. But this little pixel, this little code that Facebook gives you for the conversion pixel, we use it to really track clicks, leads, and sales. When I say clicks, like clicks to website, I should have made that more clear, like clicks to website or clicks to specific pages. Now the attribution link, if someone sees an ad and then Googles you later and comes to your page, Facebook can actually track that for you up to 28 days, supposedly. We're looking at a lot of numbers, we're always still looking at a lot of stats and this has really just kind of um, been an interesting situation to where we're trying to find out, especially with this one real large client, where are all the sales coming from? Is it an affiliate that then sees our offer? Is someone seeing an image and then they click on an affiliate link because an affiliate mailed them? Like, who has the assist? Where's the first point of discovery done? We're walking through that. But really, you wanna take a look at running your ads for at least over a 28-day period because you will see buys increase four, five, six days even after you quit running ads. It's really quite weird to see. You're not gonna see like hundreds of people buy the day you quit running ads. But I see people buy when we after we quit running ads, if we have ads down for a day or two before we move to the next point. Um, each goal page you want to optimize with Facebook will need a conversion pixel. So if you want to optimize people to read your blog, put it on your blog page. If you want people to opt in, put it on your opt-in page. Now the audience pixel, two different pixels. I'll walk you through the example here in the very next slide. The audience pixel is a, a create a custom audience by uploading a list of emails or phone numbers that you own or you get from a list. You can create retargeting pixels from audience pixels. So these are the pixels that you'll put in place. You'll put one conversion like on the thank you opt-in page to record the conversion and you're going to put an audience pixel. So two pixels so you can start basically separating people out. Uh, for retargeting based off of the level of the funnel that they're at for your online business, right? 
With audience pixels, you can also create similar audiences of less or greater. Let me explain, or similar or greater, not less. So basically, here's what happens. Your Facebook page, a conversion pixel, an audience pixel of at least a couple hundred people can be made into a similar audience where Facebook will go out and if you select 1%, Facebook will go out and find the top 1% of the profiles that closely match the pool that you're targeting. Conversion, retargeting, whatever. Greater is 5%. Greater is saying, go out and give me the top 5% of the profiles that closely resemble um, the customers that I have tagged to this pixel, right? What we're seeing is a year ago, if you got really, 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 really niche in your targeting, you could get cheap clicks because it was highly um, relevant, but you couldn't scale traffic. Today, what we are seeing and we are testing out is bigger, much broader audiences. So Zach, I'm kind of curious. I mean, you've worked with me for seven or eight months. In your opinion, like where have you seen targeting go? Like from small to large, like what have you seen in some of the biggest trends, if that makes sense? I mean, we used to use 20 different keywords when you started. Now we use three or four. Would you suggest people to start start wide and narrow in or start really narrow and wide out? Well, it depends a bit on the product and how wide of a market um, people have hit before, like what type of niche it's in. Um, we really don't like to go over under 100,000. Sometimes we're actually forced to do that. And one of the beauties of Facebook actually is that we have a client that we've run for over a year, pretty much the same creative on an audience that's under 50,000. And that makes them... A few hundred dollars a day, say five hundred dollars a day, they average about fifteen thousand dollars a month, literally on an audience of about fifty thousand people. So the small audiences can make money, but the wider ones are where all the opportunity is. You hundred thousand's the minimum, and then for a lot of our clients, a million's kind of the high end that we're looking for, unless they're converting to a general market, which we do see some of the um, the the survey and quiz opt-ins. We, we're having a lot of success with those. But it does depend on the product and the niche. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, whoops, audience. All right. So I'm going to show you just really quick, uh, like a glimpse of the funnel, right? And this is just a random funnel that I grab. So here's an ad that works for us. Look on the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, you're going to see a conversion pixel. That's a cookie. The audience pixel is like a fortune cookie, right? It's really the fortunes in the follow-up. That's why I chose a fortune cookie. Um, and then I'm going to show you funnel targeting, which you're going to see this little green box appear around the funnel cookies, essentially. And these are great to build funnel audiences that you can retarget for at any time. And I'll give you some examples of retargeting. So obviously you have Facebook ads that goes to your lead page and then can be retargeted or you have your contacts and your opt-in, your exit. Like if you just read down this, I'm sure lots of you, of course, have your own funnels. And this is just something basic that we threw together, right? So watch where I'm going to place all the pixels. Ready? There we go. So what happens is, is I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna put a conversion pixel and an audience pixel, and I'm happy to share the slides too. You wanna to put a conversion pixel and an audience pixel. Um, I like to put one on my landing page. Some people say, Kurt, why do you put a conversion pixel on your landing page? They haven't even opted in yet. That's all right, I just wanted to collect data and I can create a similar audience if I wanna expand my marketing, right? It's all about marketing and options. So what I do is I place a conversion pixel and an audience pixel when the contact opt-ins, now, when someone does not opt in, you see from the lead page where the arrow comes down with the little green, you know, green box or the green outline around the fortune cookie with the dollar sign on it, this is an audience that I'm going to retarget later. So anytime I come out with a blog post, for example, I'm going to retarget, I'm going to send an email, I'm going to retarget all my buyers, obviously, I want to keep them engaged, I'm going to retarget all my opt-ins, and on top of that, I'm going to uh, retarget anybody who just landed on my landing page for branding. Right? I mean, they've, they've gone to my landing page. They're kind of sort of qualified. So why not run some ads in front of them? So what I do is, is you start taking a look at the funnel. You can see where I place cookies. So contact is sent to your thank you page. I'm going to put a conversion pixel so I know that they converted. And Facebook's going to know, okay, these people converted on the thank you page. Right? And then my fortune cookie. I can retarget my opt-ins. Of course, I'm going to retarget them. I'm going to send them an email. But I'm going to upload that email as a custom audience. And I'm going to have a pixel that I can retarget that audience as well. Again, this is great for blogging content. You're going to launch a new product. So now as I keep on going down the funnel, we go to where someone fills out a survey or they've opted in for the webinar. 
in each part of the funnel, I'm uh, each part that where they basically move down their interest level and pre-qualify themselves a little bit more, right? I'm making sure that I'm adding a conversion pixel that I'm watching, and I'm making sure that I'm uh, um, um, that I'm always adding an audience pixel. So of course, then we have the post sale where I'm going to want to create a lookalike audience for my buyers. I'm going to have a retargeting pixel, a conversion pixel. And you can see if you really count up the four different fortune cookie boxes with the green outlines around them, I've really created four different audiences depending on their interest level where I can relaunch and retarget stuff at any time. Very, very, very effective. See, what happens is when we're creating these similar audiences, we can say, hey, Facebook, I got this blog that I really want to push some content to, to a big wide open market. Go out and find me similar people who landed on my blog page but didn't buy or Facebook, go find out and find me people who are just like people who opted in or just like the people who bought, right? Really important because really if you're putting these cookies in here and you're putting these pixels in here, right? And you keep, this is super, super, super important. I can't stress this enough. If you keep consistently running traffic, you're gonna see good results. Where we see clients really take a nosedive is where they, they're like, oh, hang on a second, this isn't working out, my funnel isn't working, let's just turn off traffic for two weeks and see what happens. Like, I can't tell you time and time again, like, um, a lot of what we do is a lot of skill, but really, honestly, sometimes it's a bit luck. Meaning, we'll get into this great algorithm or stream of Facebook or whatever, and things are running, and we're getting lots of leads, but they're just not converting on the back end. We would turn down ad spend while you work on your funnel to figure out different things that we can test and then scale back up. But if we turn it off and wait a week, we may never recover those same numbers again. So always be running traffic because every seven days, Facebook's gonna update your lookalike audience. So basically what we have here is this. I'm gonna show you some of these money posts that we have. So when we retarget audiences, what we're gonna do is we have like a link preview ad like this that says, hey, I know you watched this video, right? Here's some more content. I am always retargeting my certain audiences where you saw the fortune cookie at. I'm always retargeting someone who opted in but did not buy. I'm always retargeting with testimonials. I'm also retargeting with a bunker, ad, with, this is basically a bunker ad. So long story short, we have an office in Austin, Texas. It is on the lower floor, what we lovingly refer to as the bunker. So this is a bunker tour. This is, hey, let me show you a tour of the office so you get to know us a little bit better. By the way, uh, I is not the best speller. How Facebook ads is going to change your business. It is spelled wrong. It has the highest click-through rate. More people have bought through this one video than any than almost anything else that we have. FYI. Uh, and this is all set up on retargeting. Now, the other thing is, is we have a 45-minute VSL. Well, what we do is we just retarget uh, four videos of me standing in front of a dry erase board. And we use lead pages for this. But what happens instead of someone watch doesn't watch the full 45 minute, we're going to retarget them with a testimonial. I'm going to retarget with a tour of the office. We're going to retarget with four videos, which essentially is my VSL just cut down into uh, five to seven minute videos that someone can uh, not even opt into. They're just retargeted. Watch, 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 buy, make a buying decision. <clears throat> now, some of the things that we capitalize an audience for, uh, animation is a little off. Every time I have a blog post, once a week I have a new blog post, I am emailing my list, turning on my retargeting for buyers, turning on my retargeting for thank you opt-ins, turning on my, uh, uh, my retargeting for anybody who hit the landing page. I am doing a new ad every week that leads to my blog post. And of course on my blog, I have retargeting set up as well. On my blog, I have Google retargeting. So what happens is, is Google is always getting updated every week with my new post, Everybody on Facebook seeing it, my likes, friends of friends, areas I'm targeting it to, everybody knows that we have a new blog post out. The other thing is, is we did our high-end coaching webinar a couple of days ago. We do them every six to eight weeks. And all we did is just turned on ads for only the people that we're retargeting. So everybody from the landing page to opt-ins and our buys, right? We only retargeted them, said, hey, dominate Facebook. We just turned on we literally just turned on ads three hours before the webinar just to retarget. I just wanted to test it. And we jumped our webinar attendees by almost 200 people within about two hours, which is really interesting. I wouldn't suggest in doing that. But what happens is, is then you can just run replay. Hey, the replay is up. Just run retargeting ads to everybody who opted in. 
So by setting up your retargeting funnel right, you're not only getting Facebook to do all the hard work to find conversions, but you're also repurposing information, building additional rapport. Lots of people watch our blog and I've been seeing over and over more and more people buying from our blog. So as we wrap this thing up, create stories. This is a super important download. Make sure you write down this link, socialmediaadgenius.com, facebook-ad-study. This is a brand new study that came out. Uh, you'll see it on this page. It's going to talk about the focal point, the brand link. This is this is literally a research house that came out June 9th. They did a bunch of research that came out and found what creative elements matter, what objective is important, top performers, brand personality. Like this is, please read this report. Please, I don't have a whole lot of time to go into this. Please write down this URL and get this report. And again, I can help send out this link. It's very, 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 very important. All employees required to lead, uh, read that. Placement, make sure that you're selecting different placement. If you just use default settings, Facebook's gonna serve the ads everywhere. By the way, Facebook topped a billion monthly users uh, on mobile. This is back in April, so check this out. Facebook will allow you to advertise in the mobile feed, just like you see right here, mobile phones, lots of people know that. What a lot of people don't realize is that you can actually advertise now, this is using Power Editor, with pop-ups inside of apps. So inside of apps, Facebook's running advertising. Really interesting. Also banners. Facebook's also running banners inside of apps that they're with as well. So really split test these out. This retargeting can really make a huge difference for you. By the way, this is just mobile that you will find inside of Power Editor. You, know, you have the rules of targeting. Only target your warmest audience for the first 100 sales. If you're relaunching a new product, get those pixels set up, run as much traffic as you can so Facebook will see, and remember, you gotta run it from Facebook, but I would upload your audience of your email buyers, I would email, or I would run Facebook advertising just to your buyers for your new product, and then get 100 people past that pixel, it'll help out your cold market a ton. Now, Facebook is gonna change ad sets, it's gonna be working in the, uh, uh, coming out in the next couple of weeks, Please download this report. There is nothing to buy. This is actually gonna take you right to a site. This is a second link. Uh, link. Make sure you write this link down. Again, socialmediaadgenius.com forward slash new dash FB dash ad set. Brand new ad set coming. You absolutely need to be aware of it. Check it out. Rule number five, let Facebook do all the dang hard work for you. My time is about up. I know we covered some really valuable tips. Uh, however, we know that it can be over uh, uh, overwhelming. So basically here we can take any questions or I know, honey, you have some slides as well too, which by the way, I put in here or I can switch over to you, whatever works best. Um, but basically what I tell people is if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to set up time with you. You're inside a flight club. We've done this with a lot of people inside flight club. They're like, hey, look, I just... I just need 20 to 30 minutes. Like this really isn't a pitch. It is, is there any way that we can help you? So Zach runs the agency. I travel a lot so I can meet amazing people like yourselves. Um, if you want to set up some time to chat, just CC us on the email. But if you could write Ashley, she's my executive assistant. She controls Zach and I's schedule. What we've really committed Ashley to do is to really assist us in scheduling our stuff. So basically Zach just focuses 100% on the agency. I focus overall on growth. And then Ashley just tells us where to show up. So if you have any questions, you want to meet with Zach and I, uh, do me a favor. Let's block out time on the schedule so we can give you 100% of focus. And if you really want us to help us on your funnel, we're happy to send you over a little intake form. Uh, people fill it out so we can understand their avatar, give you some ideas. Um, but let us know if you have any questions. And I'm kind of turning this over to you guys. Do you guys want me to go through the slide or just would you like to take my presentation over? Uh, let's see. Let's switch over. Hi, everybody. Hani here. And yeah. Kurt, thank you so much for the presentation. Can you guys hear me pretty good? I can hear you great, my friend. All right, cool. So if you guys don't know me, my name is Hani Heydu. I actually um, I run all the Facebook ads for Mind Movies internally, and come want to come over with some of the notes that I got from our um, Facebook rep that we have. So if you guys are ready, let's dig in. So the biggest takeaway that I got from him was um, ad frequency. So basically, you want to keep a keep your eye on frequency and you can kind of go into the reports and you can check the box that says frequency. Hey, honey. Uh, I was told that, yes. Real quick, sorry to interrupt you, buddy. Did you want to share your screen or go over notes? I'm not seeing your screen, I just want to let you know. 
Oh, well, you have it up right now. I'm just kind of reading off what oh. you have. Oh, not a problem. I just wanted to double check. Hang on one second. I didn't know if you got control. Actually, I, I think you have control now. Okay, let me do that right now. Okay, one second. Here. Yeah, because you'll just see my last slide, which is yours. All right, can you see now? Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Excellent. All right, perfect. All right, so i um, going to highlight them here. So pretty much frequency. Um, keep an eye on frequency. So they don't like seeing anything above 2.5, I was told, and that it does take an effect uh, as far as, like, the algorithm and how they serve your ads because the more of the frequency, the more that Facebook thinks you're trying to spam that audience. Um, second thing is, you know, colors. So pretty much I was told, you know, red, orange, pink, purple, anything that's bright, um, avoid, you know, blue, white, and gray because they do, you know, match Facebook's um, colors as far as like background and logo and all that. Uh, they're favoring, uh, Facebook is favoring video ads. I don't know if you guys see that a lot. I, I, I kind of see it a lot now with big brands. And the reason why it helps with edge rank because they're being shared more. Uh, they're being watched a lot more. I think they just published a report in the Facebook marketing um, Page. I'll send that over to you guys in the Flight Club uh, Mastermind. You guys can check check it out. I think the average like watch video is like 43 minutes or something like that. It's ridiculous. Um, and then basically the Facebook ads work on a six-hour cycle. So pretty much if you're not seeing much traction in the morning, you know they do break down the day into into uh, six different parts, or sorry, four different parts. So it kind of give it some time for the algorithm to really like work through those you know different cycles. Uh, and this was like a big, big deal for us as far as the bidding strategy. So we had a campaign, you know, let's say it was working very well, and then I had a spend of, let's say, like $1,000 a day, and then I just went in there and put like five, ten thousand $10,000, $10, and then it just wasn't spending anymore. And for the longest time, you know, I kept testing different, you know, different budgets, and I just didn't know why it wasn't serving. So we thought we had like a spending cap, and then once, you know, our rep looked into our account, and he said, you know, your daily budget is... If it's too high, Facebook's algorithm thinks that you're pretty much just trying to like spam everybody in your audience, and they look like they look into that. So I kind of got back what he reported back to me and said, you know, if you're this is like your audience size. So basically, if your audience size from zero to two hundred fifty thousand, you know, set it to a hundred dollars a day, um, two fifty to five hundred, you know, one fifty to two hundred, five hundred thousand to a million, around you know three hundred to four hundred, and anything over a million, you can do a thousand dollars a day. Now he did say if you are going to increase the daily spend, I mean I put it here repeat slowly, like increase it very very slowly. I think Kurt, you said you increase it by what, like twenty percent? Yeah, I do. Tw I do twenty percent every three days, and then just monitor it. And sometimes I see literally, I'll see conversions double. Not meaning I get double the amount of conversions, but my price conversion will double. And then I got to wait two three days to let that thing level back out. So I, like I like to tell everybody. Nothing's a trend on Facebook with us unless we see it for three or more days. A lot of people will freak out after one or two days and shut stuff off. Uh, but Ana, I don't know about what, what you think as well too, but I tell everybody like just wait a couple of days before you make any crazy decisions. Yeah, and I was actually told that it, Facebook's algorithm takes about you know a minimum of four to six days to really like look at all the data and kind of figure it out if you're bidding on optimized CPM. So. You know, never pause that on day one, day two, day three. At least wait at least, you know, four, four or five days, and then you can kind of go from there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And then going to, uh, so if you're running a, a, a like, page like campaign, so this is the numbers that I got from him as well, too. So if you're getting page likes from 10 cents to 20 cents, that's pretty good. Uh, 30 cents to 40 cents, about average. And then in the 80 cents and higher mark, you kind of want to look at the ad or, you know, the target audience and kind of work on that as well, too. And then, uh, a page like strategy that I got from him was, so basically you set up a, a page like um, campaign, and what you do is you pin a post to your timeline listing the benefits of, you know, what the visitor will get out of liking your page, and uh, the pin posts are pinned for seven days, and then after every seven days you have to go in there and renew it by, you know, going to the post, clicking on the top right hand, uh, type top right hand of the post, and just hit, you know, repin to the top, and then here's an example of what we did. Pretty much we ran a like campaign. And then you see this right here. You can click on that and pin it. And then what it does is it pretty much pins it to the top of the page. And then any other post you do, we'll write it right under. And then um, pretty much you say, welcome to my movies community here. You know, we'll give you a daily injection of inspiration quotes, free gifts, cute and funny videos. So pretty much, you know, they like the page and they're like, okay, well, let me check it out. And then they kind of see this. So it kind of like reassures them like what they're going to get out of the page. So they're more likely to engage with your page as well, too. And... Um, Here's a different, you know, here's all the different placements I'm testing out for likes. 
and you can see right now our you know the best you know likes that we're getting right now are on mobile on iOS and Android and then second best is we're doing friends of friends same thing on Android and iOS and um, sport testing desktop newsfeed and then friends of friends on desktop newsfeed I'm doing desktop right hand side and friends of friends of desktop right hand side and I'll keep I'll keep updating this as well too and you know anything I see I'll post in the in the actual private group and I'm actually split testing right now um, the the lookalike audience for similarity so every time you move the sim uh, similarity you know one bar over it creates like one percent two percent three percent and four percent so I'm actually testing out one percent two percent three and four percent and once I have enough data I'll post that in the group as well too and I think that's pretty much it for me right here yeah so if you guys have any questions just you know let us know Either everybody fell asleep, or everybody's like, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. <laughs> or, somebody's back, or somebody's backing up a skid loader, it sounds like. Uh, I don't know if I, on my side, I'm not, see, I'm not seeing any questions. Like I said, I'm, I'm always open to answer anybody else's additional questions as well, either here or setting up some time with, with Zach and I, happy to go over it. Yeah, I don't see anything also. And quick tip too, um, when you're when you're placing your uh, your audience pixel, um, what we do is you know how it, it you can pretty much store up to 180 days. So what I'm actually doing right now as well too is um, instead of using a conversion pixel for like let's say opt-ins, I'll use a look I'll look a, I'll use an audience pixel, and then what I can do is then I can keep that um, running for let's say six months. I don't have to keep re-uploading every month my customer list if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Um, I think that's. Is there anything else you want to share, Zach, from some of the similarities you say? I mean, we talked about the survey, obviously, and filling out some surveys. We see that crushing. Anything else that's similar? There's lots of different niches that would listen to this. Yeah, those surveys are beautiful. Reach out to us and let us talk. Like, I know Kurt's told me that this is the inner circle and we're happy to share things that are working on our side that we wouldn't otherwise share with other people. Um, the. The quizzes are just something that are really doing well here. We Every single client we interact with, we, we recommend it to them. It's just the, with the disruptive nature of Facebook traffic, the quizzes and the interactive nature, and we have some really good examples to share. Those are just really killing it with the, the cost per leads, like seeing them anywhere under a dollar down to 50 cents, depending on the niches. And it's just something if you're advertising on Facebook and you have confidence in your email follow up that it's an incredible opportunity that I don't know how long it will last for. I know some of even the big lead generation people have spoken to us. Some of the um, service providers out there, we can't actually mention their names, but they're going to start giving that out to their broader clients. So I think it's going to... Um, be a lot more common in the next few months. So there's an opportunity now to really use those before they become a little, have a little more fatigue out there. And one thing too, to touch on what Kurt said, as far as um, if you ever, you know, if a campaign is not performing too well, or if it is performing well and something happens, don't ever pause it out. Cause it happened to me in the past where um, I had a campaign that was kicking ass and then, you know, we have to pause something. And then next, thing you know, when I turn it back on a couple of days later, it just wasn't performing. So, Worst to worst situation, just you know, set the budget to like five bucks a day. Just don't pause it and just keep it running. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. And I don't know if I'm seeing any other questions in here, sir. I think that's. It. Let's see. Okay. Do we have any other questions? No, nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, Honey, Kurt, anything else you'd like to add just as a final word? Uh, if anybody has any questions or wants to reach out, just you know, look for us on the private group and just message me privately if you want or you can post a question and we can reply back. Kurt, it's all yours. Yeah, I mean, other than that, like I said, I put my information up there as well, too. Either Ashley at Black Box Social Media, and then just copy in Kurt, C-U-R-T, um, and or Zach, Z-A-C-H, all at Black Box Social Media. Happy to answer any of your questions. If 
like I said, you kind of want us to go through your funnel or chat with you for a little bit, always happy to do that as well. I just, I just love to give information, share and collaborate and it always seems to come back to us. So love the mastermind group, happy to assist. Yeah, it's fantastic to have you here too. Thank you so much, Kurt. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Hani. Really, really appreciate you sharing your insights and your brilliance and all your strategies. It's been absolutely fantastic. And uh, as Kurt said, as Hani said, you know how to reach out to both of these guys if you'd like a little bit more help or some more information. And definitely go ahead and post any additional questions or feedback in the Facebook group for Flight Club Mastermind and we can connect with you there too. So with that, keep in mind the replay of the call is going to be coming your way in about 24 to 48 hours. Uh, if you don't receive that for whatever reason, um, check your spam folder or then just reach out to Alexandra and she'll be able to help you make sure that that gets into your hands. And um, have a fantastic rest of the day, a fantastic rest of the week, and we look forward to connecting with you really soon. Take care, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.